All right, quick economics class. So the quantity of money, and I guess we'll have to do the value of money. I think this will work out. All right, let's see what happens. So the first thing that we need to look at is supply and demand. Demand curve, remember Harvard always asks you to label your chart, okay? Demand curve, supply. Okay, label it. Okay, there is a proper supply and demand chart for the value of money. The, uh, how about purchasing power of, of currency? I know, okay. All right, okay, fine, great. Uh, I'm not gonna go into foreign exchange and all that because that gets really complicated. All right, great. So, we're talking about Japanese investors selling their Japanese government bonds. So they went to cash. They have cash. Bonds have fallen. So demand for bonds have fallen. Demand for cash has increased. Great. Now they got this cash. So you can have a supply and demand chart based on that stuff. So now they've gone to cash and they decide they want to convert it to US dollars so that they can invest it in the S&P 500. And then the theory is the S&P 500 will go up. But there will also be an impact on the um, foreign exchange market and the value of these currencies. So you could do a supply and demand curve like this for the Japanese yen and you, you could do another one, the supply and demand curve for the US dollar and therefore you can get all this put together, right? All right, so great. So we're talking about, they, the, so this is Japanese uh, purchasing power of the Japanese yen. There's a better chart label, okay, great. So they have cash and they want to sell it, right? They want to sell it so that they can buy US dollars with it. So let's do that. So when you sell it, it becomes available in the market, right? So the supply uh, curve needs to shift to the right. Okay. I'm not even going to change the demand curve, but demand would fall because like, um, if everyone is selling it, obviously demand for it would be low. So you would even shift this to the right. But let's just do supply side here. Have you ever hear that? By the way, do you ever hear economists saying, oh, well, that's just supply side. You know, we're not even going to talk about demand side economics or, or the other way around. Do you ever hear that? This is it. In this case, I'm like, ah, we're only going to do supply side. Okay. So supply one has shifted to supply two. And this means there is more Japanese yen as you shift to the right. Okay. Also, if you want to look at it this way, let's try to explain it here. If, if we're looking at the demand curve now, look at this. Okay. When demand is high, the value is high, right? When demand is low, all that kind of stuff. But let's just do this. We have an equilibrium point here, which we will call valuation one. Now that the Japanese investors have gone to cash and they're going to change, exchange their cash in the foreign exchange market, there's more Japanese yen in the interbanking system. So the demand curve, or sorry, the supply curve of yen shifts to the right. And this lowers now if to equilibrium price two, which shows that the value or the purchasing power of Japanese yen has fallen from equilibrium point one to e equilibrium point two. Okay? So a shift, an increase in the supply of Japanese yen in the interbanking system lowers its purchasing power or its valuation, if you will. 
So with all things being equal here, not even discussing the U.S. dollar, if we're looking at a chart of the USD yen now, okay, because of the based on Japanese yen, right, the base. Okay, if if we were at 101, and th this is price now the Japanese yen. What would happen to the Japanese yen? if it if supply of yen in the open market increased and its valuation falls how is that reflected on this USD yen chart assuming nothing's changed for the dollar USD yen should go up so I'm going to do that in a slightly different color or how about a much different color one would suppose this would happen based on this trade outlined in this chart here. Now the money is then going to be converted into dollars. So then the demand for dollars will go up. And the opposite would be true, right? So let's say if we switch this to dollars and demand for dollars increased, you would shift demand to the right. And you'd get an increase from D1. Well, I guess it, uh, let's do this in black to keep it consistent. You'd shift this from D1 to D2 if it was dollars now, not yen. And the value of the dollar, you know, the equilibrium point, uh, was we went from what? I uh, want to make sure I get this right. We went from here no. Well, this is the equilibrium point. So this is the new equi equilibrium point here, right? So I if we're talking about dollars, so I guess we could do this like this is Japanese yen one, Japanese uh, and Japanese yen two. So we could do dollar one, and the new equilibrium point now is dollar two, right? And you would see that in that case, when demand increases, the, the value of the currency goes up from the equilibrium point one to equilibrium point two. So this is your E1, or this is your E2, this is the E1. This is the yen, E2, this is the dollar E2, okay? So based on increase of supply in yen, the yen falls in value. Increase in demand in dollar, increase in value. So based on this alone, you would also expect the USD yen to go up. And combined, if they're both happening at the same time or potentially for the same reason, then it goes up even further or faster. Uh, that's all I know about that.